Hey, we nerds and no-till nuts. I'm the Rascal Farmer and welcome back to the no-till lab. Here we are down in the lower greenhouse, otherwise known as the nut house, looking at the Mendo Dope males. This is number seven. Looking pretty. Oh, look at the leaf hopper. Starting to turn a little pink. This one here. This is number two. And I am going to take these and move these out of here. I'm either going to get rid of them as soon as any of them start to drop pollen and just put them in a bag and be done with them or move them inside to the pollen room but or the pollen room, the flower room. But most likely I'm just going to get rid of them. I do have cuts of them downstairs. I do like number eight. Pretty. Well, you can see the wind. You can probably hear the wind. Um, we were going to put the plastic on today. Today is Sunday, but there is no way I'm going to get that plastic on today. Even the three of us here wouldn't be able to hold that thing down. So we've got a uh, 54 by 48 foot long piece of plastic. So we're going to stretch it out up there on the backyard and then I'm going to cut it. But when those trees are blowing around like that, no, nah, it's not going to happen. Look at that. Trees are starting to change color. Jeez, a Pete's it's early. Still drying out the worm castings. Looking out, looking incredible. All right. Well, let's go in and uh, check out the greenhouse. Looking at the green ice. Gorgeous. Really like the way it's uh, turning out. Looks a lot better than it did. It started to get these no-till pots all figured out. I'll probably end up connecting it up there to the trellis with some of that Velcro tape. Come back in here and later and do that. I did uh, top dress them today looking at the Ninja Fruit. This one is suspect. I'm starting to see pistols brown up. Let me see if I can focus on that. I don't know if you can see that. Pistols are browning up. It's either extremely uh, cold, intolerant. We have had some really, really crazy weather. Last, during the last week, we've uh, had four mornings out of the last week that were in the mid to low 30s. Um, this morning, like right now, it's 77 degrees and 36 percent humidity but this morning it was 36 degrees and 89 percent humidity and in the last seven days we've had four mornings in the mid to low 30s the lowest was 34 so it's possible that that is uh, causing the pistols to brown up um, i suspect that it's self-pollinated i don't see any nanners i've looked at it with a scope i don't see any nanners I don't see any nut sacks, so I'm going to keep an eye on it, but uh, it certainly doesn't look good, that's for sure. Other than that, the overall health of that plant is just gorgeous. And that is the uh, purple pheno of the 
F2 back cross 1. It's the BX1 cross. So we'll see. The little cheese plant that I put in. Man, I put this thing in in the morning. I put it in. I put it in at night. That next morning, it was 35 degrees and 90% humidity. And that thing is just being a beast. It, you can't even tell. Code black, number three. Starting to put on the frost. Looks absolutely gorgeous. I haven't gotten a scent on this one yet, which kind of surprises me. But it's been really damp and really wet, so this is like the first dry day. So let me see if I can get in there. And... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Smells like mint. Outstanding. Sweet and mint. Awesome. God, that's a gorgeous plant. I am going to have to get in there and thin this out. This thing is a bushy little thing. The five for five. Actually looking like it wants to grow. I don't know if you can see that. Look at the red. The strawberry super male. Got some red in there. I do have clones of this. Um, they did run long. And while I know they're rooted inside the Root Riot cube, you'll see later. Um, I transplanted one of the two, but uh, it, uh, it hasn't thrown any roots yet. So that plant was a little tweaky right from the start, and I cloned it when it was tweaky. So we'll see how that goes. But it looks like it's bouncing back. UK cheese. Just pushing right up. Love the structure on this plant. Co black number two, my second female. I absolutely love the way this one is stacking. That is incredible. Thick. Look at how bushy this is. Wow, I know you're getting a glare. Sorry about that. I can see it in the screen. I'll see if I can correct that in post-production. This is the... Green crack. Look at this cola. Starts right there. Goes all the way up to there. And there are nugs the entire way. That is just awesome. Man, these things beasted right out. And they are starting to smell like citrus with a uh, hint of tropical. My son smelled the one he's got in the upper greenhouse and he said it's the one he's got smells kind of like Sprite. And it almost kind of does. Code black one. Not quite as stretchy as the other one. Oh man. The nugs are definitely forming up nice. And this, what the heck was that? One of my chickens just went crazy. But this one's got the best smell. This one smells really, really strong like mint. That's that Girl Scout cookies coming in. Green crack. This one. This one I have been battling. It's the only plant in the whole greenhouse that's had any aphids at all. Um, we've had them in the upper greenhouse. But I've been hitting this one every other day with two ounces per gallon of method one. 
and I hit it last night, and I'm really starting to do a number on them. I see very, very few today. There's a couple. Can you see them? See if I can focus that. Yeah, there you go. Right in the center of the screen, the little rotten bastards. There's another one there. Yep, that's what they look like. So I will come out uh, probably tomorrow night. I'll whack them again. And I'm only hitting this one. And I'm kind of just doing it as a test. Speaking of tests, the green ice tester. Wow, what a freaking segue. I'm a beast. Woo! <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. That's looking nice. It's looking better than the other green ice. I really like the way this thing is, uh, is structuring. So I've got uh, rooted clones of this one as well. I'm trying to get this thing through the trellis. I'm sorry. See if I can't help that thing out. There you go. Support yourself, damn it. All right. Well, let's take a walk around the greenhouse. And, uh, oh my God, wait a minute. No, let's, geez, star attraction. Mendo dope, number one. Get off my plant, fly. What's the matter with you? Just starting to form nugs. God, this is gonna be slow. I hope, I hope this produces something. I don't know. I've got clones of all of these females inside. This is kind of a test to see what happens when you put them out a little late, like real late. So Mendo Dope One. But the health of these plants is incredible and they haven't cared about the cold weather either. That's a really, really cool thing. You notice that all of these other plants look good. If that's cold, that's affecting that ninja fruit. That's a little tweaky. That might have to come with a warning. You know, not intended for outdoor use. <laughs> Doesn't play well with others. <laughs> Mendo dope number four. That is a pretty, pretty plant. Man, sorry about the shade. Man, that's terrible. Looks awful dark in this in this camera. The two little green ices that I popped in the pot when I took out that uh, Mendo male. The one that faked me out. They haven't cared about the weather either. So crazy, these plants. I'm watching them take 114 degree days out there on the west coast. You know, out in California. And... While they're taking 114 degree days, I'm having 34 degree mornings. It's like an 80 degree change. Absolutely crazy. Zario Loco, number five. Look at that thing. Man, you look at the, the Mendos, and those two are pretty short. Now that Mendo over there that we're going to look at in a minute, that's pretty long, almost or pretty tall, almost as tall as this skunk leaning Zareo Loco. But that one, that one's a good four inches, five inches taller than all the rest. So really like that one. That's nice. This is the locomotion leaning Zareo Loco. So that is skunk number one by uh, locomotion. Locomotion's the male in this cross Locomotion is the female in the Mendo cross. That is a Quirkle male. So kind of like a role reversal here. And then this is the Zareo Loco number three. And all I mean by number three is that it's, when I put them in the solo cups, I needed to be able to identify them. That's just an identifier because I've got clones on the inside and I want to know which clone is this plant. So this is the skunk leaning phenotype. And again, that is a, 
That is just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. All of these things look spot on now. And you can see the lamb's quarter is just coming right in like a banshee. That stuff is good. Somewhat delicious. Mendo dope number five. The one that originally I thought was a male. And look at this thing. Those stems are huge on this. This has got bigger stems around than any of the others. And they even, they even appear somewhat hollow. But this plant is just exploding. What a little beast. Nice, nice phenotype. So cool. Can't wait to see that one flower. If I had to guess, I would say that that one leans towards the quirkle, and the ones with the pinkish and the red lean towards the loco. But I'm kind of guessing. I'm going to need a little bit more feedback. All right. Well, let's go take a look here at what we... Uh, have done with the greenhouse because I made some changes. The first thing is, oh God, this is embarrassing. This is also totally redneck. Being that the time is what the time of the year is, and I'm not going to need an exhaust fan for very long. I just screwed a box fan into the stupid opening. I'm going to run it on high to a power strip. I'm running power from up at the garage. It's going to run a couple dehumidifiers. It's going to run an exhaust fan. So I'm going to have the roll up sides. One of the things that had concerned me was up at the top wrapping the plastic around like that post into bringing it down the side. So you can see that I actually installed another bow to the outside. So now the plastic is going to have a nice round smooth edge as it comes down over the side. I was kind of concerned about what was going to happen right there as I pulled the plastic because it was going to end and then have to make that bump over the top there. So that bow took care of it. I did the exact same thing on the other side. I did take the hog clips and connect all of the stuff up at the top. You can kind of, hopefully you can kind of see that up there. The hog clips are in up there. So all of the sides and the top are all connected. Totally enclosed now. Um, when my roll up sides are going to be down, if I need any ventilation, I take the plastic that overhangs in the back. You can see the gap right there at the ground. I take the plastic as it comes down the outside and I take a cinder block with the two, with the two holes and I put the plastic over the top of the cinder block so that air can come underneath the plastic. So I put one here, one directly behind the fireplace, and one right over here. So basically between the rows of plants and right underneath the fireplace so that when this exhaust vent exhausts out, it's pulling air from the bottom of the other side and exhausting it out the top up there. And I can even close these down and keep this one open and then bring all of the cold outside air right directly underneath the fireplace and get hot from the fireplace before it goes out the vent on the other side. I had done that last year. When you look at the intro video um, where I'm sitting on that little stool, I think it's, I hopefully it's in the intro. Um, that's where this fireplace was sitting and I can bring the air right in underneath the rail, right in underneath the fireplace, pretty cool. Kind of preheats the cold air before it comes into the greenhouse. It also dries out the air as it comes into the greenhouse because it's, shoot, from the middle of September last year to the end of October, there was not a morning outside that was less than 85% humidity and we had morning temps that were in the, oh, 40 to 35 range. Almost, though, it was terrible. It was terrible. I almost couldn't keep up with it with just the fireplace. This year I'm adding the fireplace, I'm adding the dehumidifier. So we're gonna see if one dehumidifier does it and if that one doesn't do it, we're gonna pull in a second one. I will control the environment in here this year. All right, so we made that change. What else have we done? All right, let's take a walk around this way. We installed the pole. 
well, I haven't installed the pole, but you can see the pole that runs down the bottom. This is gonna be the pole for the roll-up sides. I'm gonna bring the plastic down from the channel and secure it up underneath with the two by two and then run the plastic down and then wrap it around this pole. And this pole's gonna have brackets here that are gonna fold back out of the way or be able to fold out. And a pin that I can put, or a peg that I can put into a hole here. Basically the way this is gonna work I'm gonna have an eyelet there and an eyelet down in the bottom with a loop of rope coming down around that's gonna suck this pole right in flush up against this thing. And I think I'm gonna be able to, when I join this, I'm actually gonna pull these out. I might even pull my welder down here, but I'm gonna weld these together. And then in the future, I'll incorporate it to a mechanized opening. But basically, I'm going to have the ability to drop it all the way down. And I am, even though I'm going to have the ropes in here holding this in and sucking this in, in three places on this end, on the other end, and in the middle, I'm going to put a piece of a 2 by 6 that's going to be screwed into this board that's going to come up maybe this high so that there's no way that anything could actually take that thing and drop that off or raise hell with my roll-up side. So that'll be secured down there in the bottom. The extra plastic that I've got, the remainder will come down here and I'm gonna actually dig a trench and then I'm gonna fill that back in. So that's all gonna be sealed up underneath the rail. That's gonna be good to go. So hopefully tomorrow I've got some video of some plastic being put up and the uh, wind holds off. We have a 60 to 70% chance of scattered thunderstorms. So if the ground is wet, there's no way in hell I'm gonna stretch plastic out on it. So today we got hit by the wind and tomorrow we might get creamed by the rain. So we'll see, but uh, let's go in and take a look at the uh, little babies in the, uh, down in the veg tent. There've been some changes down there too. Ah, changes everywhere, <laughs> right on. Well, it's Monday, Labor Day. I am supposed to be putting on the plastic, but uh, as you can see, the rain is coming down, trees are blowing around. Looking at the hazelnuts. And my blackberries. And my cranberries. So guys, we're not gonna put on the plastic today. Somewhere in this pond is a uh, little baby snapper turtle. We saw him the other day. At any rate, I am gonna head downstairs and I am going to uh, show you the little clones and the babies, but as far as putting on plastic today, I just ain't gonna happen. All right, little babies, we will cover you another day. They look good, they look good. Well, we are spot on in the veg tent, 74.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 52% humidity. Looking at all the babies. The green ice and the cheese up front. Code blacks in the back. These are duplicates up the uh, upper greenhouse. And you can see that I did have an issue with number eight, but it is looking fine now. Coming right back, 
greening right up. And then these are the cuts of the Mendos and the Zaria Locos, the 5 for 5, the Green Ice Tester. And these were cloned from plants that were in transition. So they're looking a little bit ragged, but give them a couple days and they'll peak right back up. Um, I've come up with a, uh, I'm using a new, uh, more natural mix. I did something a little bit different with these this time. Um, that is a uh, little mix. It's a handful of uh, alfalfa meal, a handful of kelp meal, a handful of shrimp meal, and then a uh, pinch of humic acid. And I kind of shook that up in a bucket and then put about a half an inch on the top of those pots and watered them in with a uh, one ounce per gallon of fish and kelp. And then I uh, added a little bit of recharge to that uh, fish and kelp. So getting these things started off right with the proper biology. I did that to these about a week ago um, and they perked right up. So loving it. So next time you see these, they should look dark green like these. All right, guys, that's all the time we got for today. Keep growing. You know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer, and we'll see you right here next time in the No-Kill Lab.